This sermon is brought to you by Shofar East London. Together, living out the fullness of Christ. We hope you enjoy this message. This week, uh, every day at 12, we're talking about how to release a miracle. Mm. And I want to continue where I left off yesterday. So uh, I, I love East London. I love this city because this is the city where God brought great transformation to our lives. Mm. And about 10 years we came to East London and God has changed so much in us. So I want to I want to ask us today, what are you seeing? When you look at the toughest, most challenging areas of your life, are you seeing a tormenting trial? Are you freaking out? I often say to our guys, no, rather freak up. Don't freak out. Okay. Freak up. Okay. In other words, all that stress, all that anxiety, all those worries, everything that's coming Take upon you, up. turn it all to Jesus. Trust in Him. You know, I found that every trial is a tool in God's hands to take you deeper into Him. So turn to God in the midst of your trial. Call to Him. Freak up. Say, God, help me. Help me now. You know, so a bit of our story, as I said, 10 years ago, we arrived in East London. Uh, my wife was uh, eight months pregnant, and uh, we started the church with 15 to 20 people. And I've quite a few times thought, I am nuts. What am I doing here? And so anyway, our, bo- our son was born, and about six months in, it seems like my, my wife fell into a postnatal depression. And then we went through three years of hell. Uh, she had this crazy insomnia. She'd been in bed at 8, 30, 9 o'clock at night and still be awake at 2 or 3. You know, uh, she had so much anxiety uh, that came for her heart. And uh, I remember waking up in the middle of the night at times and she would not be next to me in bed and I would, I would find her on the floor in the bathroom and she would just be weeping and weeping and just crying out, I can't sleep. You know, so I felt like she's going to completely lose it. And uh, it was three years of hell. And in that, in that time, I, I, I prayed for her so many times. We tried everything in the natural. We tried everything in the spiritual. We, like, we couldn't solve this anxiety and this insomnia. And uh, I, I literally, without exaggeration, I prayed for her hundreds of times, sometimes twice a night. I would just pray for her and I'd say, Jesus, you Lord over this, whether it's physical, whether it's spiritual, you, you Lord over this. And, and, and yet nothing changed. And uh, I had to face the reality that I believed God is powerful, but I didn't know his power. I had a theology that God is powerful, but in practice, I didn't know his power. And I believe there are so many other believers in the same predicament. You believe God's powerful. You believe God is a God of miracles, but you're not seeing it. You know, And, and in that season, I felt the Holy Spirit whisper this to my heart, saying to me, If you don't know my power, you don't know me. Because God is powerful. So if we don't know his power, we don't really truly know him Mm. as we should. And and Jesus confirms this in Matthew 22, 29. Uh, Jesus speaking to the Pharisees. And he said to them, you are in error or you are deceived or you are mistaken because you do not know the scriptures or the power of God. It's such a profound statement. So Jesus, in a sense, rebuking the Pharisees, the religious guys, the religious leaders, saying, guys, you're deceived. You're missing it, and you're completely misunderstanding me because you don't know the scriptures, and secondly, you don't know the power of God. You know, and I've often heard people say, if you just know the scriptures, you're fine. But Jesus say, no, knowing the scriptures is not enough. You need to know his power for he is powerful. Jesus saying you need both the scriptures and the power of God. But there are so many believers that don't even know the scriptures and so many people don't know his power. And, and I was one of those. I was in the ministry for 10 years uh, at the time around 2012. Um, three years into this whole thing, uh, my wife wasn't sleeping, was killing us. We don't, didn't have joy. Uh, we weren't having fun anymore. It was such a challenge. It was like I was being pushed into a corner and I had to make a decision. Andre, either you're going to completely lose your faith and your wife, or you're going to push deeper into God for breakthrough. And I chose option number two. 
And I, I had such <laughs> compassion. I, I was just seeing so many other people battling with physical stuff and depression and sickness and whatever else, so many people battling. And praise God, as we pushed into God and pursued His power, uh, Jesus stepped onto the scene and He healed my wife of the insomnia, of the anxiety, mm. and of a skin disease called psoriasis. Okay. Praise God. But what we learned was that a, a tormenting trial uh, is a tool in God's hand to lead us into breakthrough. So I, I want to encourage each one listening right now, whatever you're going through, if you choose not to lose your faith, if you choose not to give up, but to actually allow the trial to take you deeper into God, God will lead you into breakthrough. And, uh, and the Lord used this whole thing uh, in our lives. You know, my, my wife and I, our passion is to make the bride of Christ beautiful and powerful. That's our, I believe that's our life mission, to make the bride of Christ beautiful and powerful, uh, authentic, but also powerful with the real presence of God. And, and, and God used that trial in us to stir our faith, to increase our faith. And in the process, we've seen hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of people physically healed. I stopped counting at 1,200 people, and uh, it's official. Jesus heals. He's powerful. Yeah, yeah. We can't keep up with him. Absolutely. Mm. But the key is you need to see things differently. Mm. When you look at the tormenting trial, is it destroying your faith or is it your invitation mm. to go deeper into God? So I want to encourage you to think of the most challenging thing you're going through, this most challenging situation, and, and imagine Almighty God stepping onto the scene. You need to see it, and then you need to partner with God in bringing it to pass. So I want to encourage you, don't give up. Simply surrender to God. Don't lose your faith. Trust in God. Don't freak out. Freak up. Choose to trust in Him, and you will see the power of God manifesting in your life. Amen. So let me pray for us. I'm going to just pray that God would, would help you in whatever you're facing and to open your eyes to see. So Father, I pray for your children right now. Lord, I pray that whatever they might be facing, maybe a spouse far from you, maybe a tormenting physical disease, maybe a child in rebellion, God, whatever it might be, I pray, Lord God, that their faith would be stirred to see Almighty God stepping onto the scene. And then, Lord, I pray that they will partner with you to see that miracle come to pass. And Lord, we pray this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you for listening. Find more on Shofar East London's podcast channel. Let's do life together.